top of the morning to you, ladies and gentlemen. It's Timmy. It's too early. <laughs> uh, it's coffee 30. That's what it is. Um, okay, we're going to do the morning early bird special. It's a little earlier today than it was yesterday, but it'll get earlier and earlier, so hopefully. Uh, we're going to do Proverbs chapter 16. And uh, if you're wondering, this is a wild grapevine. Well, I don't know technically if you could call it wild since Louie's growing it over there. Morning to you too, buddy. Um, but we started, okay, I had a question. What does PC stand for? It's kind of a snub at political correctness. But it's also um, standing for prayer call or prayer circle. So when you see the PC, it's standing for generally prayer call, call to prayer. And uh, when I started doing them originally, this this grapevine had no hardly any leaves or anything on it. And since then, we've watched it um, bud out. We watched it leaf. We even watched it grow some grapes. And I don't know if it's good fruit or bad fruit, but this is probably the sweetest, like coolest looking grape I've seen. It looks beautiful and perfect. It's like half green and half purple. Um, but yeah, so it's pretty crazy, really. It's grown a lot, so. I like to look at that, thinking about Jesus being the living vine and all. Um, no. Alright, we'll go ahead and get started. We got Proverbs chapter 16, and um, they, asked, they asked if they should read the Bible, and I, was, I said yes, of course, we should read the Bible, but I'll say we can read it together. <laughs> right uh, and I will actually yesterday I said I wasn't going to break it down everything and I'm not I probably won't break down everything but as we go I'll, I will break it down because um, we're not in a hurry so and a lot of people said they enjoyed breaking it down now I'm imperfect and I could be wrong on some of my understanding so I just want to put that out there I'm not trying to tell you what to believe I'm just telling you what I believe so um, verse 1, Proverbs 16, verse 1 says, The preparations of the heart in a man, the preparations of the heart in a man, and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirits. Commit your works unto the Lord, and your thoughts shall be established. The Lord has made all things for himself, yes, even the wicked for the day of evil. Wow. <laughs> so, the preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. If your heart is prepared and your answer is in alignment with your heart, then it's from the Lord. Because it, you're naturally not intrinsically always a good person. Uh, and the, the, there's a lot of scriptures about the heart being wicked. And I've said many times, drawing from scriptures, that your heart will work against you. Your feelings can work against you. Not always, but um, but in the eyes of a man or a woman, their own ways are always clean. I mean, a lot of people don't have a conscience anymore. And if you have one, that's a good indicator of God's weighing the spirits, right? Like it says right after so commit your works to God or the Lord and your thoughts will be established so if you start to do good things for God then your thoughts will start to get more corrected also nobody gets saved one minute and then all of a sudden is perfect um, you know perfect walker of the walk and talker of the talk it's a process when being born again you don't just become born into adulthood and maturity in the spirit or in real life so and by real life, I mean material. Uh, okay, everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. So when you see the, the wicked or the proud holding hands with the humble, just because they're holding hands doesn't mean they're going to the same place or they're going to get the same uh, measure of favor. In fact, oftentimes you'll see the proud and the haughty You'll see those guys actually getting the favor in this life when you're wondering why did all the good people suffer and the bad guys always seem to be getting ahead in the game. 
By mercy and truth iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord men depart from evil. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Hmm. Jesus said, love your enemies. Here in Proverbs, a long time before Jesus shows up on the scene, at least in the flesh body of the Christ, making peace with your enemies. If your ways please the Lord, you can make peace with your enemies even. And, uh, not if you can't beat them, join them in style, but look at Daniel made enough peace with his enemies to where they lifted him up to high, very high status in the kingdoms multiple times. Uh, you can see the favor of God many times in the stories throughout the, the Bible. <clears throat> and it's by mercy and truth that that iniquity is purged. And the fear of the Lord's the healthy respect. It's also hating evil. So those are the, that's how it builds up into your ways pleasing the Lord. So better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. A man's heart devises his ways, but the Lord directs his steps. A divine sentence in the lips of the king, his mouth transgresses not in judgment. A just weight and balance are the Lord's, and the weights of the bag are his work. It is an abomination to kings to commit wickedness, for the throne is established by righteousness. Okay, this is not 100% specific. Hi. Howdy. How are you? I'm good. How are y'all? Good. What are you photographing? I'm actually doing a Bible study. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to put you on camera in case okay. you don't want to be on YouTube. But... Well, we're here actually to invite all of our neighbors to a Bible-based uh, convention program that's going to be held at the end of the month in Frisco. It's free. Everybody's invited. So we that's cool. That'd be yeah. awesome. I'll yeah. see what I can do. Okay, great. <laughs> All right, enjoy your Bible study. Hey, thanks. Y'all carry on the good works. <laughs> I think uh, they caught me off guard, and I caught them off guard. That kind of freaked me out a little bit, actually. Should I stay or should I go? Should I stop it or should I keep going? <laughs> That's what I thought, you know. Um, I almost asked some tough questions, but I don't want to put them on the spot. Alright, so it's um, the weights and measures, right? It's abomination for God if you're going to be doing business unrighteously. The people who have the ability to be in control of things, if you're you know, I mean, think about it in a million different ways. If you got your uh, organic food and then you find out, oh, it's actually not organic, you know. Or if it says it's sugar-free, but then it's got some kind of crap, man-made sugar that's even worse than actual real sugar. Oh, man, imagine that. Oh, it's a vaccine that's good for your body, you know. And then you find out, oh, wait, this was a bad batch and we, we got everybody. <laughs> I mean, it's a, there's a million things that when you... It's one thing to make a mistake, but it's another thing when you're wickedly doing these kinds of things. You put filler in when you weigh things out, you know, um, which was a lot more important back in the day. But what I think what I was saying before they came up was the kings are appointed by God, right? And if the kings are appointed by God, they're supposed to righteously judge a matter, and they're the ones that rule. They're supposed to be like representatives of um, the higher authority because they're the highest authority in a physical, material plane, in that sense of the word. But they're, um, they're just humans like us. But you can see when pride happens, what happens with that. So, um, righteous lips are the delight of kings, and they love him that speak right. The wrath of a king is, a messengers of de is as messengers of death, but a wise man will pacify it, in the light of the king's countenance is life, and his favor is as the cloud of latter rain. How much better is it to get wisdom than gold, and to go understanding rather than be chosen than silver? Okay, and to go and to get understanding rather to be chosen than silver. The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. Hmm. He that keeps his way preserves his soul. I always thought there's a stairway to heaven and there's a highway to hell, right? 
Now in verse 17 says the highway of the upright is to depart from evil. Well, I guess heaven has a highway too. It's just got a lot less congestion in the traffic. <laughs> um, <clears throat> verse 18. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. I think everybody knows that scripture. Pride goes before destruction. A haughty spirit before a fall. Pride comes before a fall. Um, haughty is like nanny nanny boo boo. That's kind of attitude. <laughs> haughty is like I'm holier than you are. Uh, I know more than you do. Uh, that that whole kind of mentality. Uh, arrogant, pompous, full of themselves. Um, putting themselves up above everybody else. Um, so verse 19 goes on and says, Better is it to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. He that handles a matter wisely should find good, and whoso trusts in the Lord, happy is he. The wise in heart shall be called prudent, and the sweetness of the lips increaseth learning. Understanding is a wellspring of life unto him that has it, but the instruction of fools is folly. How many fools try to give you advice when you know, hey, this really isn't the person I should be taking advice from, you know. <laughs> I've got uh, quite a few of those I want to suggest how I should do things or how I should... Uh... <laughs> yeah, anyways, understanding is a wellspring of life unto him that has it, but the instruction of fools is folly. Now, I already have verses 23 through 27 blocked off, so all of these are important to me. That one's cool. I just had to point that out, sorry. The heart of the wise teaches his mouth and adds learning to his lips. Pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. There is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. He that labors, labors for himself, for his mouth craves it of him. An ungodly man digs up evil, and in his lips there is a burning fire. Hmm. That seems pretty simple to me. The way seems right in your own mind, but at the end of it, it's the road to death and destruction. Um, when you work, you're working for yourself. If your mouth craves it for you. Uh, look at my great works, look at my job, look at my paycheck. Look at who I have contacts with, blah, blah, blah. That whole kind of attitude. Maybe that's laboring for yourself. Uh, sometimes even to take it a step further, if not, not evil, but the pride and the haughty is what he's referring to so far. But if you take it even a step further to idols, um, look what I can do, but it's not because it's um, I want the credit, but it's because I'm putting my family first. Right, and that's it's great to put your family first, but a lot of people will use that as an opportunity to have pride, but to uh, pass it off on something else. Uh, I've seen that firsthand. Where I make X amount of money a year. What do you make? Well, what kind of car do you drive? You know, I'm just doing mine for my family. Okay, well, why don't they have the fancy stuff? Why are you the one with the fancy pants on? <laughs> um, anyways, idols, anything that comes before you and God. Anything could be an idol. Pride, in this instance, is uh, a form of idolatry. So a froward man sows strife, and a whisperer separates chief friends. Alright. Wow, I mean, a violent man entices his neighbor and leads him into the way that is not good. He shuts his eyes to devise froward things. Moving his lips, he brings evil to pass. The hoary head is a crown of glory. If it be found... Come on, buddy. Or was it... The hoary head is a crown of glory if it be found in the way of righteousness. And that's a gray-haired person. <laughs> the elderly were to receive deep respect back in the day. That's what the commentary says. So, the gray head is a crown of glory if it be found in the way of righteousness. <laughs> I think most of my gray hair is from stress. But, uh, he that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. 
and he that rules his spirit then that takes a city uh, and he that rules his spirit then he that takes a city the lot is cast into the lap but the whole disposing thereof is the Lord hmm well, uh, if I could summarize the theme of that whole passage was um, don't get angry, <laughs> don't be mad. Uh, the things that you'll do when you're mad, don't get pride, don't be uh, full of yourself to the point where you think that you're better than other people. I thought it was pretty simple, but a lot of these things, like just because they're worded in an odd way doesn't mean that it's too difficult for you to read it. It's normal words, I mean, maybe if you don't speak English, but they've got it translated, so you can find a translation. Now this is cool, um, I haven't read it yet, but I did start, the, I read the scripture portion. Kitty! <laughs> okay, um, 16 minutes in, so this is from Exodus chapter 16, verse 21. And it says, they gathered manna every morning. And manna was the food from heaven, if you don't know what that is. So. Um, Mr. Spurgeon says, Labor to maintain a sense of your entire dependence upon the Lord's goodwill and pleasure for the continuance of your richest enjoyments. Never try to live on the old manna, nor seek to find help in Egypt. All must come from Jesus, or you are undone forever old anointings will not suffice to impart unction to the to your spirit your head must have fresh oil poured on it from the golden horn of the sanctuary or it will cease from its glory today you may be upon the summit of the mount of god but he who has put the he who has put you there must keep you there or you will sink far more speedily than you dream um, your mountain only stands firm when he settles it in its place and if he hide his face you will soon be troubled if the Savior should see fit there is not a window through which you see the light of heaven which he could not darken in an instant Joshua bade the Sun stand still but Jesus can shroud it in total darkness he can withdraw the joy of your heart and the light of your eyes and strength of your life in his hand your comforts lie and in his will they can depart from you this hourly dependence our Lord is determined that we shall feel and recognize for he only permits us to pray for daily bread and only promises that as our days our strength shall be is it not best for us that if we um, is it not best for us that it should be so, that we may often repair to his throne and constantly be reminded of his love? Oh, how rich the grace which supplies us so continually and does not refrain itself because of our ingratitude. The golden shower never ceases, the cloud of blessing tarries evermore above our habitation. O oh, Lord Jesus, we would bow at your feet conscious of our utter inability to do anything without you and in every favor which we are privileged to receive we would adore your blessed name and acknowledge you unexhausted uh, acknowledge your unexhausted love or thine unexhausted love but man that's a mouthful of crazy words <laughs> And what I got from that was to be seriously dependent on Christ for everything. And if you know the analogy he was referring to with the um, with the manna from heaven, okay, when when the Israelites were led out of Egypt from their you know years of slavery, you know, let my people go. <laughs> um, when they when they were out in the wilderness, you know, they could have gone from a point A to point B straight line, or, you know, maybe a little bit more roundabout, depending on the, the territory, but they could have got to the promised land in a very short period of time. They didn't have to walk around for 40 years, but God led them. Uh, God led them, and he fed them from heaven, like manna, literally. 
but the, there was a couple rules. It's like you don't you don't store the mana away except for on the Sabbath. You can't pick it up on the Sabbath. So that's the only day where you could get enough for two days. But every other day, like he feeds you every morning, and it, I think at evening also. But if he feeds you, um, maybe it's once a day. I don't remember. I have to go back and double check. But either way, he's feeding them every day from heaven. Um, and it's like, why would you ever? If you knew God was going to be taking care of you like that, why would you ever like get a double portion to say, oh, well, maybe he's not going to hook us up tomorrow? Like I could see being like overzealous for something that God has to offer and wanting a double portion of that. But that's where he was saying, like, you can't be sticking to the old things. You need to be anointed new and afresh. Um, you know, like, imagine a time in your life where you were doing all the right things and everything was all good, and then you hit, like, a speed bump, and it went downhill pretty quick. And then it's like, I think a lot of us can relate to wanting to get back to a better time. Um, well, there might be better times coming than what was in the past, so don't look back, look forward. Learn from your past, and don't look back or look down. Look up and look forward. That's what I would say. There ain't no discharge paper on the ground. That's what they say in the military. Quit looking at your feet. Look up, you know. Put your chin up. Um, okay, so... This will just get into the prayer, but... That, I really liked what he said. Because I'm thinking here, the, the food from heaven we're getting is the word... And we're reading it every morning now. It's the second morning, and it's manna. It's talking about manna. They're getting fed in the morning. Uh, and it's a good way to start the day and get it going. So I know I'm all slow motion for me today, but that, I don't know. I kind of woke me up a little bit. So, Dear Father, thank you for blessing us with this day. Thank you for waking us up. Um, thank you for letting us experience another opportunity to be taught, um, fellowshipping together. Thank you for those people that stopped by and um, witnessed to me mildly. Uh, I always appreciate a good invitation and a good conversation. So uh, we just pray for them and their organization that, you know, if you see it fit, God bless them. Uh, let them bring as many to Christ as possible. And let them teach the word accurately and soundly. Um, I, anybody who's doing good work for God, I'm supportive of that. So. Thank you for everybody who's listening, God, that you've brought to, to you know, my walk. Uh, thanks for letting me share it with them. And um, I'm just grateful and thankful to you, Father. So this is going to be a, an awesome day. i got a lot to do today, so it's time to go get it done. And I know I'll be doing it with you. I'm not working uh, for myself. And help me not to rationalize and justify my own ideas, God. Let me... Um, let me speak with the honeycomb, you know, like, uh, let that come out because it's from my heart that's already been prepared and that it's coming from a, a mind that is trying its best to prepare the heart so that the spirit can all be a pleasure to you, God. Um, that's the goal, is to make you happy. <laughs> if we take care of you, you'll take care of us. You've already, you'll take care of us regardless, so that's really the, the pleasure. Um, is to know that we're loved even at our most unlovable states and conditions of God. So, Father, we just offer these prayers up to you. We just ask that you walk with us, um, that you protect us, that you know our heart's desires and needs, and let us just spend this time with you now. And as we've spent this time with you, now we'll go with you, and it, throughout the course of our day, we'll wait to hear a word from you, and we'll wait for a confirmation from you, and we'll wait for um, a more close experience with you god because we spending this time now to draw near to you and you tell us in your word that you'll draw near to us so we'll wait for you to fulfill your word and uh, we'll go with god uh, we love you so all these things we pray and offer in jesus christ's name amen all right guys i'll see you all this evening have a good one <laughs>